Trust is an incredibly important concept, particularly when dealing with cancer diagnoses. Uh, anytime folks hear that word cancer, there's automatically a fear that's associated with that. So I think it's important, particularly for a provider, to make sure that they are open um, to listening and really very um, much, I think, welcoming in terms of their approach. Oftentimes, people come in and they're so terrified they don't even know what to ask. Para empezar, que hay que informarse. To start, you have to be informed. I wasn't already informed. Just hearing the word cancer made me scared because all of my family died from cancer in my country. So I believe that the panic I felt was what brought me to the point that perhaps prevented me from asking the questions that I needed to ask. When I went for my first consultation with my breast surgeon, she said something to me that, you know, has resonated, has stayed with me over the years. And she said, realize whoever you choose as a doctor is going to potentially be with you for the rest of your life. Because after a cancer diagnosis, you will always need to be followed, or screened, etc. And so that helped me to realize the importance of making sure that the medical team that I created were people that I could connect to, that I could communicate with, um, because they do, they are actually an extended family. So I recommend that, particularly with an initial consultation with an oncology provider, that patients bring a family member or a friend, someone who can also help to advocate on their behalf. Because there, there's gonna be a lot of information that's delivered at the time of that initial consultation that sometimes it's so overwhelming you don't know what questions to ask. Having patients be aware of what questions to ask their particular physician, uh, but also to have this open dialogue about what's important to them. How is it that they want their lives to be? What are their, what are their important goals? What is it that they'd like to see in the next year or two? These are all the types of discussion that points that should be covered when you're talking with your physician about the next step for treatment. Sometimes in terms of being able to express and communicate the need, uh, there are some people that are unable to do that. And my advice still would be, you know, write a list, just write it down and submit the list, you know, if you're unable to open up. Uh, some people are, some people aren't. Uh, but I think part of opening up is the success of the treatment. Uh, your oncologist has to know what you're feeling, you know, and it, it just has to be a, a match there because you're going to spend time together. There may be times where, where people do not feel that it's okay to question a person that they consider to be an authority figure. Physicians traditionally, many, many decades ago, did have this um, concept of being an authority figure. So there may be people of older generations that don't feel comfortable asking questions. Similarly, our, our population is becoming more diverse. So people are coming from other countries and they may not feel comfortable with asking questions of their provider. If you feel uncomfortable about talking about certain things, it's okay to even share that information. It may not be that you share it with the physician. You may share it with someone else in their office. It might be a nurse. It might be a medical assistant. And then that information can be then relayed to the physician who can then help you feel more comfortable sharing that information. And again, this is where having someone with you can sometimes help. I actually use the analogy of if you move to a new city and you saw a police officer and you wanted to get directions somewhere, that if you didn't understand the directions, it's important to ask for clarification. Otherwise, you'll never get to your destination. And similarly, when you're dealing with cancer, this is a journey. And cancer treatment is a journey. So it's important to know and to be able to understand what directions are being given. And we say this over and over again that the only bad question is the one that you didn't ask. And I guess the corollary to that would be is the only one that wasn't answered to your understanding as well. So if it is something that you don't understand, then it, I think it's uh, absolutely critical that you have clarification on, on just what they meant when they were answering your question as well. As far as medical jargon goes, it, it was an overwhelming experience. And I used the nurse navigator often when I left the doctor's office with my notes and called her up and said, I don't really understand this. Can you explain it to me? Also, the oncology counselor was another person. I love when patients you know, interrupt and say, you know, can you explain what that means? It's really important for patients to advocate on their own behalf. For patients who don't speak English well enough, um, 
they should really communicate with their providers and ask what type of language services are available to them. If it's an in-person interpreter or if it's a telephonic interpreter, uh, and make sure what the provider can, can have available for them, not only on the first visit, but every single time they come to see their doctor. I had that barrier because sometimes the doctor spoke so fast and I was so in shock. I didn't understand what he was saying because he spoke and it went in one ear and out the other. And I wondered, why not ask this, why not ask that? So I asked the doctor to please have an interpreter come so I could get help with the language because there were terms that I didn't understand. I asked the interpreter what I wanted to know. What was the treatment going to be like? How long would I have to take it? What would happen next? Things like that. I mean, I tried to ask her about all of my concerns, and sometimes the doctor spoke with me too. I understand a little English, so I tried to talk to him. Things that I didn't understand, she helped me with. The help of an interpreter is very, very important when it's not your language. The interpreter is there to basically bridge the language gap and try to get out of the way as much as possible. Uh, our goal is not only to provide uh, language services, but also to help uh, the patient and the provider communicate with each other as if the patient spoke English. In that way, uh, you can be sure that there's as much fidelity as possible in the, uh, the terms that are translated. Um, otherwise, um, even for native speakers, you know, med medicine is, is really uh, a different dialect in and of itself, a different language, and unless you have people who are professionally trained, uh, you might lose some of the fidelity that's important to make sure the point is clear. So this is also where, for example, a relative um, uh, may not be the best person to serve as that translator. Hospitals that participate in federal programs, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, um, are mandated by law to uh, provide language services for free to the patients. And in those cases, um, the hospital would be the one uh, scheduling the interpreter, whether it's an in-person interpreter or um, making arrangements to use the telephone uh, for services. And a way that I kind of do a double check is sometimes I'll ask a patient, you know, so can you, can you tell me you know, what we just discussed. Can you tell me what the plan is going to be moving forward? That gives me an opportunity to hear from them, in their words, what's going to happen, what the potential side effects of a therapy might be. It's another way for me to double check, to make sure that even though they're sitting there nodding their head, as if they understand, that they really do. I would say to any cancer survivor, do not walk away until you get a complete understanding. That understanding would be the success in your wellness journey. Uh, if you don't uh, have that understanding, then it poses more stress, you know, in the process. Stress is not good to have as you're going through such a critical uh, process. And so always, always remember, do not walk away if you don't have that understanding. No matter how long it takes, get the understanding so when you walk away, you'll feel good about knowing what the next step in your process is.